Okay. I see it found some augmentation crystals. I was not even aware it knew about them. Well done. So, what does it think? They don't make me look any wider, do they? I find I'm already too wide as it is. Oh, don't be ridiculous. They're useful. Hmm. I think it takes for granted that it gets to wear clothing and other sorts of colorful things. I think these are lovely. I think it should find some more as soon as possible. I want to glitter from ear to ear, so to speak. <clears throat> oh. What's with the heavy size? Oh, that. Merely reflecting on the hopeless nature of the task in front of it. The most likely outcome is that it and its companions will become a stain on some rock for the darkspawn to tread upon. I shall be moved to a single tear by the tragedy. I don't think our chances are so bad. Oh, how adorable. Such hope is sweet to see, if a bit alarming. What's that? Did it hear flapping wings? There may be pigeons nearby. We should be alert. <clears throat> oh. I would have expected golems to be different. Different? Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, master, I exist to serve the master. I shall kill for the master and only for the master. <laughs> Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks if it likes. I'm sorry, that, that bit about the monotone is just... I love that. It's so funny to me. Yes, master, I exist to serve the master. I should kill for the master. No, <laughs> just so, so good. I love that. That was so funny. Are they dirty limericks? Mostly, they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative and invasive manners. I have never met another golem. I have no idea what one might be like, or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? Hmm. You just seem very animated. I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. Hmm. It's an experience, I'll give it that. So is being drawn and quartered. Maybe I'm not the only one with a smart mouth, hmm? Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. Well, excuse me, princess. Oh. It doesn't have better things to do. Hmm. Are those crystals in your skin? I like to think of them as accessories. Hmm. What do they do? I suspect that it is an art that was practiced when golems were more, um, commonplace. My former master collected whatever lore he could find on the subject. He searched far and wide to collect what crystals he could and then added them. It is not an unpleasant sensation. Hmm. So it's a dwarven thing, then? So, I would assume. My former master enjoyed poking around the ruins in the deep roads, after all, and bartering with others who did. As I understand it, the crystals allow me to alter the flow of magic around me. Wilhelm had hoped to turn me into a battery of mana, something he could tap at will. Hmm. Did he succeed? Not really, although now that I think of it, these attempts may be what caused my disruption. Some of the crystals increase the presence of mana, some absorb or reflect spells. There are various kinds. All I can promise is that should it ever find one of these crystals, I can likely tell it the function and what it would do if added to me. Hmm. Where would I find them? Wilhelm said they came from the deep roads. So, anywhere such things end up, I suppose. That answers its question, I assume? Unless it has more. I'm told you killed your former master. 
Did I not already tell it that I do not remember doing such? I remember having a master. My memories of what happened to him are vague. Vague, but non-existent. Clever and true. Oh, very well. Let me see what I can recall. My former master enjoyed experimenting upon me. I remember that much. There was tinkering with spells and then the crystals. He was very eager to alter my function, I think. Hmm. What sort of experiments? Bah. I am no mage, and he did not explain himself to me any more than it would explain itself to a sword. He possessed my control rod, and back then, it would have prevented me from doing anything he did not command me to, no matter how I might have wished to. So what happened? I am unsure. He was experimenting, and then... nothing. So he hit the kill me button by accident? Oh, ho, ho. It does like to laugh, does it? But who knows? I may have such a thing. And then he was gone. I was standing where I was, in the village, and I could no longer move. The villagers came, poked and prodded me in fear, and then realized they could neither move me nor destroy me. So they simply left me. And in time, I forgot I hadn't stood there all along. But you wanted to kill him, right? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Very much so. For so many years, I'd had to leap to that little toadstool's every command. Get this, pick up that, put it down, pick it up again. The gall! At first, I'd hoped he'd simply decided to leave me there paralyzed. An acceptable trade-off. After years passed, I simply stopped caring. Hmm. Maybe it has something to do with your crystals. Hmm, possibly. Except that he was not experimenting with the crystals at the time, I think. But my memory is not good. It may be correct. Whatever the mage did seemed to render the control rod useless, for which I should be thankful, yes? And provided it doesn't decide to copy his experiments, not that I would allow it, it has nothing to fear from me. Much. Hmm, sounds good to me. The things that it fights, and it fights things often, that is a different story. Let us get back to the walking and the fighting. My stone is beginning to itch again. Let me give you a pet rock. Ooh, shiny. Hmm. Get it? I'm to keep this, am I? Fine. I'm to keep this, am I? I've watched a lot of humans in my time. It should be aware that I've decided that it is not much like any of them. Uh, that could be good or bad. Good, of course. It doesn't want to have anything in common with all those other filthy substandard human types, does it? Surely it must come from some superior lineage, yes? Some breed of flesh creature that has decided to elevate its genetic stock above its natural shortcomings? You don't know how true that can be sometimes, but yes, my father was the Terran of High Ever. Oh, then that must be it. I knew there had to be some reason, it being a human and all. I would appreciate if it didn't spread around that I said anything. Humans might start to get the wrong idea. They might start thinking their race is not completely hopeless. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, we wouldn't want any of that. Indeed. Can it imagine the horror? <laughs> now, let us crush something into a fine paste before it starts to think I've gone all soft. Perish the thought. Perish the thought? It speaks... I have questions. It doesn't have better things to do. How did you end up in Harnleith? Oh yes, that I remember quite well. My former master, the Mage Wilhelm, 
He brought me. As I recall, he had acquired some position with whatever lord ruled the land. I, being little more than a glorified possession at the time, was brought along. Oh, how he enjoyed impressing the villagers with me. Gollum snarl at that villager there, be fearsome. And of course, I would have to do it. <sighs> hmm. Do you remember anything before Hanleaf? I traveled with the mage. He did a lot of traveling, I remember that. But where we went, it is rather fuzzy. I remember great battles, fighting many humans long ago. They were all very soft and squishy. And before that, I... No, there are only images. I was somewhere dark. Hmm. The Deep Roads. Hmm. Just how old are you exactly? I have no idea. Wilhelm used to brag that the dwarves stopped making golems centuries ago. I do not age as you soft creatures do. Sadly, my memory is no better. Plus, I get bored and stop paying attention. Hmm. But why were you out in front of the tower? That is where Wilhelm kept me. He wanted me out in the open where I could be frightening like a scarecrow. I was supposed to watch for thieves. Pah. Plus, his wife didn't want me indoors. She said there wasn't room for me. Hag. His wife? Hmm. I was once larger, ten feet tall. Then the loathsome hag complained that I couldn't fit through the doors. So the mage had me shrunk down, shrunk down. Can it believe it? And she still wanted me out. How does someone shrink a golem? With a chisel. And a lot of nerve. Ouch. So you didn't like this Wilhelm, I take it? He did love using that control rod. Fondled it so much, his wife actually threatened to throw it in the lake. Ha! <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Which reminds me, where did it find the rod? Did it pay a great deal for it? Uh, Wilhelm's wife sold it, I believe. Hag. Hmm. I'm done asking about that. Good. I was just about done. Okay. Let's chat with Sten again. Why are we stopping? Hmm. Well, I think we should get to know you. There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? Well, you were in that cage for weeks. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. Hmm. You said you were in the army. I am. Have you ever fought in a war? I have always fought in war, human. So you must know your way around a battlefield, then? Some of them. They aren't all alike. I've never seen a Kunari before. Can you tell me about your people? No. Why not? People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. A little hostile, aren't we? Many humans have said that to me. I do not understand it. If I were indeed hostile, you would be bleeding. So this is you being calm and helpful? Couldn't you tell? You know what, just follow orders and you'll do fine. As you wish. You called. So, why were you imprisoned? I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. Hmm. You put yourself in that cage? I know that my failures were my own. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Callanhad, they came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us, our own shadows harbored the darkspawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. Hmm, that sounds like what happened to me at Ostagar. I heard the stories of Ostagar. Your kith stood their ground when others fled. 
No one can do more than that. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead, nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke I was no longer among my brothers, and my sword was gone from my hand. You probably dropped it on the battlefield. Perhaps. I searched for it, and when that failed I asked my rescuers what had become of it. Did they know where it was? They said they found me with nothing. Did you believe them? I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. You panicked over a lost blade? That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Tevinter, unarmed and alone, to bring my report to the Arishok, I would be slain on sight by the Antarm. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. Well, couldn't you search for it? If I knew where to look, it would be in my hand now. Well, where did you fight the Darkspawn? Near Lake Callanhad. We'll find it. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. And there's his quest. Alistair! Something on your mind? Do you want to talk about Duncan? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. That doesn't mean I don't mourn his loss. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this could happen. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it, not when so much is riding on us, not with the blight and... and everything. I'm sorry. There's no need to apologize. I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. That's an excellent idea. I think he came from High Ever, or so he said. Maybe I'll go up there sometime. See about putting up something in his honor. I don't know. Have you had someone close to you die? Not that I mean to pry, I'm just... Yeah, you just uh, brought up a touchy subject with me, pal. <laughs> My entire family was murdered just recently. Oh, oh, of course. How stupid of me to forget. Here I am going on and on about Duncan, and you... I am so sorry. Thank you. It was good to talk about this with a friend. It means a lot to me. I'll go to High Ever with you. I mean, after all, it's my home. I'd like that. So would he, I think. Something on your mind? Of course. Hmm. So what can a Templar do, exactly? Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. Hmm. So couldn't others learn these talents? Perhaps. But there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the Lyrium trade with the Dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. Yeah, this, uh, two things about this. One, this helps give an insight into how basically the Chantry keeps a leash on the Templars because of the Lyrium. And two, I love that they give really good insight into this through Cullen in Inquisition. I don't know about you, but that whole bit in Inquisition with Cullen struggling to fight his addiction to Lyrium, that was what got me to really care about Cullen as a character. I'll talk more about this when we get to Cullen in this game in the tower, but 
yeah, that really got me to care about Cullen uh, once I learned about this. Now, of course, Alistair told us about this here in Origins like he did just now, but we didn't get to see it. Seeing it with Cullen was a whole different aspect to this. So did they get you addicted to this, Lyrium? Thankfully, no. You only start receiving Lyrium once you've taken your vows. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away, either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. Lucky you indeed. Whoops, whoops. Something on your mind? Of course. Could you teach others to be a Templar? Sure, I could. I could even teach you, I suppose. Anyone who's been trained as a warrior. I guess if I'm going to give up Chantry secrets, I may as well go all the way. Send whoever you want trained to me in camp. And I'll see what I can do. Templars. Something on your mind? Of course. So, tell me about this Arl Eamon who raised you. Oh, did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. Uh-huh. You are not Mowgli. <laughs> That's not what I remember you telling Flemeth. Well, if you're going to go and pay attention to the facts, then fine, fine. Let's see. How do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My oh. mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died <clears throat> young. Our Lehman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. So, just as a reminder, and of course we find this out, uh, not necessarily in the games, but we actually find this out in the books. That's not actually Alistair's mother. Alistair's mother is not some servant girl. Alistair's mother is Grand Enchanter Fiona, the elven mage that we meet in Inquisition who's leading the Mage Rebellion. This was confirmed in a book, in case you're wondering. So, yeah. Let's also keep in mind that uh, the people who wrote Inquisition also did not write uh, Origins. That was a different writing team. Just putting that out there. And remember, like I said, this game was made without the intention of sequels being made. Just also putting that out there. Hmm. Why did he send you off to the Chantry? Ali Man eventually married a young woman from Orlais which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Isle didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age 10, just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. He sold. I'm sorry. I'll talk more about this when we get to Red Cliff. I don't... <laughs> there are things about he sold I understand and can actually go ahead and defend. But I... Oh my gosh, I do not like he sold. I can't stand her. Ugh. Hmm... So then you were probably luckier than most orphans, though. I suppose you're right. I wasn't raised as the Isle's son, though, if you're picturing that. I slept in hay, out in the stables, not on silk sheets. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there, and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. Hmm. And you think that he will help us? I think so, yes. 
This news we've heard about him being sick disturbs me, though. I wonder if we won't discover that Loghain has come to the same conclusion as we have. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. Something on your mind? Of course. Why have you remained a Templar if you hate the Chantry? Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. I mean, I don't blame ya. I thought the Templars wore heavy plate. That's just in public. In private, we have these yellow and purple tunics, right? Much more comfortable, and you don't break the beds when you jump on them during a pillow fight. <laughs> You had lots of pillow fights, I take it? Uh, pillow fights? I mean, no, of course not. I meant sword fights. <laughs> with rusty swords, dripping with acid. The kind that puts hair on your chest. You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. Actually, no, I actually do really want to know. Poke, poke, poke. Tell me everything about your life, Alistair. All right. If you insist, it's not like we have anything better to do, right? The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. Hmm. What did you enjoy about the training? The education, mostly. But also the discipline. You need to have a disciplined mind in order to use the abilities we have. It was difficult, but rewarding. I never really felt at home anywhere, though. Until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic. So I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? Well, my home was taken over by Arl Howe. Right. Stupid of me to ask. I'm sorry. We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose the Grey Wardens are gone for good. Either way. Not for good... They can be rebuilt. I suppose you're right. We can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. All right, let's talk to Leliana now. Something I can help with? What would someone like you be doing in Lothering's Chantry? What is meant by someone like me? Gotta be careful here. I'm not romancing her this time. I already showed you the Liliana romance the first time we did this. Remember, we're romancing Morgan. I'm certainly not going to try and romance both. Oh my gosh, no way. Uh, if there's anything The Witcher 3 taught me is never try to romance more than one woman in a game. <laughs> <laughs> now, I didn't learn that the hard way. I didn't actually experience that personally, but I found out about it, and I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, nope. Besides, I had already uh, fallen for yen by that point. Anyway, so never mind. Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, well, they don't teach you to fight like that in the cloister. Did you think I was always a cloistered sister? The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. Affirmed. We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste, and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken. Hmm. Well, what did you do before that? I was a traveling minstrel in Orle. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Oh, Leliana. Right there, you don't seem to be that great of a liar. 
something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? This vision of yours. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. Hmm... So you dreamed of the blight? I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. And this made you want to help me? In my dream, I fell. Or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? I suppose I couldn't sit by either. That is why you're a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. Alright. Let's now talk to Morrigan. I await your command. I'd like to ask you something. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Did you grow up in the wilds? Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? <laughs> you can probe me anytime. <laughs> Beg pardon then while I jump for joy. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time, I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. By the way, just to remind you guys, I want you to really listen to Claudia Black's voice acting. Oh, she is just a wonderful voice actress. There's, there are some moments... And I'll try and show this as we go through where she just has this wonderful level of nuance in her voice acting. I love it. And you remained unnoticed. For the most part, Flemeth taught me well. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. Hmm. Were you hurt? Was I hurt? What manner of simpering weakling do you take me for? Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be traveling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language, and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally, he was arrested. Hmm. That was quick thinking. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak, and two, that she finds him attractive. I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? <laughs> I mean, she's not wrong. 
<laughs> uh, like a handshake? To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told, but then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Well, I'm glad it worked out. Yes? Let's ignore the entire Darkspawn threat and the presence of a simpleton as your only other Grey Warden ally, then. Not that I lack appreciation for the intent of your comment. Thank you. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? It is cold in my tent, all alone. Oh my, we jumped straight into this. But then again, yeah, she is, um... Uh... <laughs> She's usually easier to be able to uh, trigger this kind of scene uh, than with Leliana. With Leliana, it takes a while, but with Morgan, she just right away is like, oh, hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I could be like, I'll get there, but they're gonna be like, what do you want to, we, well, we can't have that. So you shall come to my tent? But whatever shall we do in that <laughs> tiny little space together while we wait for it to warm? Oh my goodness, Claudia Black. <laughs> I'm sure we'll think of something. Good, then let us waste no more time with foolish talk. I see the stories they tell of Grey Warden endurance are not exaggerated. Oh my. Oh, you're just saying that. Not at all. Legends abound regarding such figures as Garahel, sordid though they may be. The unanswered question, of course, is whether the endurance exists because of the taint within you, or because the Grey Wardens are by nature so very healthy. I enjoy the thought that tis a little of both. Natural prowess driven by a darker side. So what now? That is entirely up to you. Simply know that I have no designs on your independence. I wish only to do what I desire, and if that coincides with what you desire, then so be it. And should you decide not to continue our misadventure, then so be it. Very simple, is it not? What about love? Does that enter the picture at all? Oh, now you ruin the mood by speaking profanities. Silly man. Come then, let us be off before the others begin to stare. I have something for you. <laughs> Is it bigger than a bread box? Here's a ring. Now, before you get Ooh. any foolish notions, let me explain. Okay. Flemeth once gave me the ring because it allowed her to find me no matter where I went, in case I was ever captured by hunters. I disabled its power as soon as we left the wilds. Recently, however, I thought to change it. Now, I will be able to find whoever wears it instead. So you would always know where I am? It is not to track you, you understand. I believe you are too important to risk. If you were to get captured, however, it would be far easier to find you with this. Hmm. Does it do anything else? Flemeth used to say that twas a link between us, one that I presumed worked both ways. I never tested it, but I doubt she would have lied over such a thing. So it would mean I am linked to you as much as you to I. 
I want you guys to remember this when we get to the Witch Hunt DLC. Believe it or not, this actually carries over into the DLC. So then, I could find you, if need be? I do not know. As I said, I never tested it. Perhaps. For the record, I think this is a very sweet moment here, this whole bit with the ring, and the fact that it keeps coming up a few more times later on is pretty nice. Thank you for the gift, Morgan. You are welcome. Perhaps it will be useful someday. <laughs> so, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Is Flemeth really what she seems to be? <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? A very powerful Maleficar. You mean, is she truly the Flemeth of legend and story? Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the Chastened still tell of my mother, to frighten them into obedience? Hmm... I've heard a little of it. No doubt such a tale has mutated much over time and telling. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. Hmm. That sounds interesting. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful. A fair lass in a land of barbarian men. The desire of any who saw her. Hmm. Not true, then? No, quite true. But this part only. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osin the Bard, and fled the castle of her husband, the dreadlord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth, my mother claims that t'was Osin who was her husband, and Conobar the jealous lord, who looked on from afar. Lord Conobar approached young Osen and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife. And Osen agreed. He sold his wife to another man? The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. T'was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. Hmm. So she loved Osen then? That was not the point. Conobar had no honor, so she would not have him. Flemeth begged the spirits to aid her, and t'was they who slew Conobar. The demon the legend tells of came later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the Lowlands centuries later. All lies. Hmm. Which? That she never invaded or that he never defeated her? The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people, and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. Do you believe her version? I do not believe everything that Flemeth claims. Often it seems her bitterness has colored her memories. But on the whole, yes, I believe this tale, if not all. How has Flemeth survived for so long? 
The demon within her has transformed her into something else. An abomination, perhaps, some would say. I know not. I only know my mother is clever, and she is part of the wilds as it is part of her. But she is no immortal. She bleeds. A blade in her heart would kill her like any other, were it lucky enough to find her. The legend also tells of Flemeth having many daughters. You ask if I have sisters? I have asked of this myself. The stories tell of many witches of the wilds after all, not just the one. And these tales existed long before I did. Flemeth refuses to speak of other daughters, if they existed. So, should I believe I am her first? I doubt that too. Hmm, why would she refuse to speak of them? The Chastened tell of a falling out between Flemeth and her daughters. They say that one day she hunted them all through the wilds and ate their hearts. It may be true. I have never seen another witch or heard of one. Perhaps one day Flemeth will eat my heart as well. Hmm, but aren't abominations usually insane horrors? How often is this usually? Always? If not always, then when is it not true? There are more things in this world and the next than you or I could ever hope to understand. What Flemeth became is a mystery. I suspect even to her. An interesting story. Thank you. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. She died recently, in fact. Ah, oh, then you have my sympathies for what it is worth. Which is very little, I am certain. It matters not. Let us move on. Hmm, I'm considering stopping here. <laughs> But at the same time, I kind of want to keep going. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Actually, hold on. So, let's see. Morrigan's ring. So, I have these two rings. This memory band is supposed to increase the amount of XP I get. This is supposed to just increase my attributes. So let's just go ahead and put that on right there. Okay. <laughs> we are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> tis a rather odd discussion you seem to desire, leaning in so closely. <laughs> Claudia Black. Oh, gosh. Do you object? Not unless you stop. <laughs> so, full of questions, are you? <laughs> At times, perhaps, a world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, it was to the trees. Hmm. Did they speak back? Don't be foolish. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. Hmm. What happened then? Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken.
But you were just a child. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. What's interesting is, of course, we know uh, what happens to her later on and that uh, how her feelings on this change. You don't need to live that way any longer. Do I not? I am still an apostate mage, even if I have left the wilds. The Darkspawn are yet undefeated. No, there is much that remains. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely. But such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror. But such fantasies have no place amidst reality. What I love about that is that it sets up us getting the mirror gift that we can be able to buy and give to her. And her reaction to it is just wonderful. I will try and show that when I can. Obviously, I have to go to a place that's going to be a little dangerous considering what we the, the bug that we had previously. But hopefully, it won't be too bad. So anyways, I think that's a good stopping point right here. Uh, when we return... Hmm... I think we may just go to the tower since that'll be pretty fast since I do have the skip fade mod ready to go. Um, so we can also get win in the party and uh, yeah. What's what's uh, of course visiting some of these other places like Denerim and the wilds and Orzammar doesn't mean we have to stay for the entirety of the other thing so. Anyways, we now have Morgan's ring. It's very sweet, um, especially considering what is used for it later on. I'll try and show uh, how that plays later on. It's not just in the Witch Hunt DLC. It's also later on when we um, get captured by Catherian, and uh, Morgan will chime in about that. So anyways, I'll try and see if I can show that later on, and uh, stay tuned. <laughs> 